Hello, greetings, and welcome. I'm Brian Posey, and in this video, I want to show you one of my favorite utilities for PowerShell. It's called PS2EXE. The idea is that you can take a PowerShell script and turn it into an executable application. And as you can see, I have the GitHub page open for PS2.EXE. Now, you don't actually have to go to GitHub to download PS2EXE. You can install it directly from PowerShell. And the way that you do that is by typing install-module PS2EXE. And if I scroll down just a little bit, you can see the installation command right here. The main reason I wanted to show you this page is simply because if you scroll down some more, you can see the full syntax. Now, admittedly, the full syntax is quite a bit to take in, but you don't have to use all of these parameters. PS2EXE is actually really easy to use. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to go ahead and close out my browser, and here I am in PowerShell. Now, I've already installed the PS2EXE module, and so what I want to do is just show you how PS2EXE works. And so if I just type get child item and press enter, you can see that right now I've got a couple of files in this folder. The main file that I want to show you is calc.ps1. This is a calculator script that I created late last year. I'll go ahead and just run this to show you what it looks like. So that's what my PowerShell calculator looks like. So let me go ahead and close this out. The other file is calc.ico, and this is just a calculator icon that I downloaded from one of the many sites that offers free icons. I honestly can't even remember which site I got this from. We'll come back to that file a little bit later on. For right now, what I want to do is I want to convert calc.ps1 into an executable file. So the way that we do that is by typing ps2exe space calc.ps1, that's my PowerShell script, space, and then whatever I want to call the executable file. Because calc.exe is a Windows executable, I don't want to reuse that. Instead, I'm just going to call this mycalc.exe. And I'll press enter. And just like that, the new executable file has been created. I'll go ahead and switch over to my command prompt window. And I'll type dir. And you can see the new file right here. And if I run that file, you can see that it executes. Now, incidentally, whenever you compile a PowerShell script into an executable file, you no longer have to worry about execution policies. Because even if I were to set my execution policy to restricted, the calculator app would still run because now we're running it as an executable rather than as a PowerShell script. So let me go ahead and close this out. Now, one of the extremely important things to keep in mind whenever you compile a PowerShell script into an executable is that you shouldn't include a password embedded in this PowerShell script, particularly if we're talking about clear text. And the reason for that is because you can reverse engineer an executable and extract the PowerShell code that was used to create it. Let me show you how that works. As you can see, I've got the command prompt open and I'm in my scripts folder and I'll type dir. And you can see that we created an executable file a moment ago called mycalc.exe. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type mycalc.exe and then space dash extract and then colon and then I have to provide a file name. I'll just call this calccode.ps1 and I'll press enter and if I type dir you can see that I've got a brand new PowerShell script called calccode.ps1 that wasn't there a moment ago. So if I type the word type, and then calccode.ps1, and press enter, you can see the actual code that was used to create the executable. So that's why I said you shouldn't embed a password in a PowerShell script if you're going to be compiling it into an executable, because there is a way to reverse engineer that script and access the PowerShell code and retrieve that clear text password from the code. 
Now, there's a couple of other things that I want to show you with regard to PS2 EXE. So to do that, I'm going to switch back over to my PowerShell window. And what I want to do is I want to create an executable that is a little bit more full featured. Because let me switch back to my command prompt for just one second and open up File Explorer. And I right click on the executable and go to properties. And look at the details tab. You'll notice that we don't have a whole lot of details here. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to cancel out of this. And I'm going to run a new command. I'm going to type ps2exe. Oh, let me switch back to PowerShell first. I'm going to type ps2exe space and then the name of my PowerShell script, which is calc.ps1. And then I need the name for an output file. I'm going to call this one mycalc2.exe. Then what I'm going to do is specify an icon file. So I'll type dash icon file. And I'll use that icon file that I showed you a moment ago. So I'll put that in quotation marks. It was called calc.ico. And then dash title. And I'll call this one Posey's Calculator. Space dash. And let's add a copyright. I'll type copyright. And I'll type copyright. And I'll do this DOS style. So I'll put the C in parentheses. Something like that. And let's also add a version. So I'll type space dash version. And I'll make this version 1.0. So let me go ahead and press enter. And the output file has been created. So let's take a look at what we've done. I'm going to switch back over to my command prompt window. And I'll type dir. So here you can see my calc2.exe, which we just created. And you'll notice that the file size is slightly larger than my calc.exe, even though we compiled the exact same PowerShell script. So I'm going to type mycalc2.exe and press enter. And so we can see that the calculator still runs. I'll go ahead and close this out. And then I'm going to go to File Explorer. And let's just take a look at this. I'm going to right click on mycalc2.exe and go to Properties. And you can see that the icon file that I assigned now appears as a file property. And you can even see the icon next to the executable right there. And if I go to the Details tab, we can see that the file description is now Posey's Calculator. We can see that the file version is 1.0, product version is 1.0, and there's the copyright that I created. So we've added various attributes to the executable file that we've created. So let me go ahead and cancel out of this. And the attributes that I showed you, that's just a small sample of what you can do using PS2 EXE. As a matter of fact, if I switch back over to PowerShell and I type PS2 EXE and then dash question mark and press enter, you can see the full syntax. And if you look right here, you can see that there are a huge number of parameters that are supported. And that kind of goes back to what I showed you at the very beginning of the video with the GitHub page. So the big question I'm sure some of you are wondering right now is, is there any way to take advantage of all of these parameters, but simplify the syntax a bit? Well, there actually is a shortcut that you can use because what you can do rather than dealing with all of these parameters individually is type win win dash ps2 exe. And this wasn't always supported. This is something that is relatively new, but I'll go ahead and press enter. And so what we have is a GUI front end for PS2 EXE. Now, this isn't something that I created. This is actually part of 
the PS2 EXE program that I downloaded from GitHub. So as you can see, you don't have to worry about any of the command line parameters. You can simply fill in the source file, the target file, the icon file, and then any additional information that you want. You can specify a version, a file description, a copyright, a product name, and then there are even some checkboxes that you can use. So for example, if you wanted to bind administrative rights to the executable, well, there's a checkbox for that. You can also specify if you want the executable to run as a standard executable or if you want to create a multi-threaded executable. And you can choose the platform that you want to run that on. And then when you're done, just click compile and the file that you've specified will be created. So that's just a quick introduction on how you can compile a PowerShell script into an executable. I'm Brian Posey. Thanks for watching.